Hey everyone, SoFi technology stock is gaining a lot of interest from investors. Now, I think the primary reason for that is the banking segment. I know investors like to think of SoFi as maybe a technology company, but primarily the way it makes money is through its banking business, and that is attracting deposits and making loans. It's pretty good at what it does. And I'm going to elaborate on that in this video. So let's take a closer look. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. So I, as I highlighted at the top of the video, the main business of a bank is to attract deposits and make loans, right? How much does it cost you to attract deposits and how much can you earn by making loans? Now, that cost can be different for different banks. For instance, for SoFi, it doesn't have the cost of maintaining all of those brick and mortar locations. Now, having all of those brick and mortar locations is one way to attract deposits, right? And as a bank, the more deposits you attract, the more loans you can make. So you want to attract deposits. SoFi's strategy is different. It thinks that it can do better by having a digital only presence and then spending money on marketing and incentives and promotions to attract customer deposits. And so far it's been working. They have over 8 million members. And one of the ways they attract members is they offer a higher interest rate on your deposit and they offer you a deposit bonus of $300 if you sign up with the direct deposit. So those are the prices it's paying to attract customers. Incentives, promotions, those types of things. Investing in the app, the website, making it more intuitive. Whereas companies like Bank of America, JP Morgan, they're investing in the brick and mortar locations paying the rent, the maintenance, the staffing, all of that. And then they go out and they make loans. And the difference, which here is the net interest margin, is the profit from that, right? How much it costs you and how much you earn. So far, its net interest margin was 5.91% in the quarter. And that was up by 43 basis points year over year. So the number 6%, not that crazy, not that not that uh, exciting, but the fact that it's growing 43 basis points year over year is attractive. And one of the reasons why SoFi's net interest margin is not higher is because it pays customer deposits. So it pays you for having your deposits with SoFi, especially if you have a savings account. And it pays you a $300 bonus when you sign up to SoFi. So at that time when it's paying you, it's taking away from the profit, the net interest margin. But it's working to attract deposits. As you could see, $3 billion of deposit growth in the quarter compared to $242 million of net loan growth on the balance sheet. Now, you see a significantly greater increase in deposits versus loan growth. And that's a strategic decision from SoFi coming into 2024. They wanted to be more conservative with loans this year because they are concerned about an economic slowdown. And given that they are more weighted towards personal loans, which is the riskiest type of loan you can make, they want to be a little more cautious with their balance sheet. They want to be more prudent with their balance sheet. But there's a downside to that. If you're attracting $3 billion in deposits and you're not making loans on that money, you're just paying those customers, you know, three, four, five percent interest on those deposits, and you're not making in, you're not making loans with that money, and so you're just going negative on that money. Wouldn't it be more prudent to not get those deposits if you were not planning on making loans? There's an argument to be made for that, but SoFi is still in growth mode; it still expects to grow. So it still wants to attract these deposits for a little bit later when it feels a little more comfortable with the economic outlook. And it's still going to make loans to customers with excellent credit scores 
and it's still going to make home loans because it gets collateral on those. As you saw in the latest quarter, it increased their home loan portfolio by over 240%, even though it didn't really increase overall loans all that much. So the deposits also allow SoFi to make loans or to fund nearly all of their loans from existing deposits, whereas previously they were using outside warehouse funding which is 226 basis points more expensive than their deposits. So as much as SoFi has to pay customers to keep their deposits with SoFi, it has to pay outside warehouse funding facilities 226 basis points more than that. So it's cheaper for SoFi to attract these deposits and make loans from deposits rather than from outside lending facilities. And so this difference between deposits and loans allowed SoFi to reduce their warehouse utilization this quarter by 2.4 billion. So they're now focusing more on funding through deposits versus warehouse utilization, which will have the impact of increasing their net interest margin because the cost side of the equation is decreasing. As more of the loans are made from deposits, the cost is decreasing. Even if the interest rate that they're charging stays the same, the net interest margin will increase because they're utilizing lower cost funds. So that was a step in the right direction for SoFi. Now, management also saying that they expect to maintain a healthy net interest margin above 5% for the foreseeable future and benefit from the continued mix towards deposit, along with our ability to sustain healthy deposit versus lending changes. So so far saying here that they're going to continue this strategy where they're going to focus on utilizing more deposits to fund loans and focus less on warehouse funds to fund the loans. And they can do that, especially if they're growing deposits more than they're growing loans, which is also another strategic focus for SoFi in 2024 is to be more prudent with the amount of loans that it's making. And then it's also attracting more deposits. And so the combination of these factors will allow SoFi to decrease the cost of funding and thereby increase the net interest margin, which overall boosts the profitability of the business and makes investors more interested in SoFi stock because the core of the business is this, is attracting deposits and making loads. That's the core of SoFi's business. This is what's going to drive the other areas of the business. This is profitable for SoFi. It's, you know, it told investors in the latest quarter that it's losing a hundred million in the credit and investing product portfolio on an annualized rate. So it needs this core business, the profitability in order to fund and invest in other growth areas that it wants to be a greater part of its business in the long run. But for now, this is the most critical. This is the most important. And it should be assuring to investors that SoFi is getting better at this. And they have room to improve this even more as they execute on this strategy in 2024 and de-risk the business slightly by making fewer personal loans and then lower the cost of funding these loans, which expands the profitability of each of the loans that it makes. So again, I've been giving management credit here for making prudent decisions and moving the business in the right direction. And it's one reason why a couple of quarters ago, I upgraded SoFi stock to a buy. Before I let you go, let me tell you about the greatest deal on YouTube. With just a click of a button, you can get free financial analysis from a professor with decades of investing experience. So what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.